Hi, I'm Declan Walsh. I've been a special effects animator for over 25 years. I've always been drawing from a very young age. Always been drawing. Uh, but I didn't have a clue about animation until I was hired for a job in a studio in Dublin. I just thought it was drawing. I really didn't understand the whole process of animation. But when I did start to see how the whole thing worked and what was involved, I was hooked. I just fell in love with the process. Back then, I was very lucky uh, to get into animation and even luckier to learn under Disney trained animators, some of the best animators in the world. This is some of my work that I did on Titan AE and Anastasia, where I was a director of special effects animation. Let's take a look. If you're wondering why I'm here talking about myself, uh, I put together a small project using some traditional animation techniques from boarding to final. Uh, and I hope you'll find this interesting. I took a section of a story that I wrote called The Blibbity Blob Save the Moon. I made a simple animation using Cartoon Animator in Photoshop. Uh, and they've added some new features in there that I'm gonna talk about as well. The effects were all hand animated. Uh, everything else was done in Cartoon Animator. Before I show you how I did this, here's what I animated. I use traditional workflow uh, to create this animation. And in any animation I do, uh, I always start with the storyboards. So let's take a look at them. So let's dive in and take a look at these storyboards that I've created uh, for this story. This is called Blubbity Blob Save the Moon. And it's about the moon falls from the sky and these little guys, the Blubbity Blobs, try and save them and get them back up into the sky before the sun comes up. So in this scene, we'll see it panel by panel. In this scene, uh, the moon is snoring his head off and he rolls out of bed and then he falls through the sky, through the clouds, bursts through the clouds. Here there'll be a lot of effects right there and then crashes into the Blibbly Blob's little world. And inside of here, these guys are trying to figure out, oh my God, how are we gonna get this guy back up into the sky? And we have the moon here and he's getting all panicky and he doesn't know what to do and he's splashing so it's going to be tons of effects and I'm going to animate them so that you can see how I do it um, and let's dive right in. So I break down all the elements in the scene and reference my storyboard notes what's animated what's not and I do this for each scene and if there's any elements that I can reuse this is where I know I can find those areas where I can reuse those elements rather than rebuilding it over and over. After I have all the elements built and every scene is ready to go, I take them each one by one and bring them into Cartoon Animator. Now, because I have storyboards, I don't have to build them in order of the storyboards because the storyboards like my guide. So I just take each scene, usually the ones that are mo most intensive on special effects or animation and start with them. And I can always hook up later and make the whole thing a bit more smooth. Reillusion has such a great resource of characters in the store and ready to animate. And the fact that I'm an effects guy, not a character animator, takes the pressure off. So check out the store and all my effects at DexArt. They'll plug right into your projects. 
Now my basic scene is set up. I know from my boards what animation and effects I want in here. I also know that the character is not fully in motion. So I break out the feet and break out the arms so that I can do the ripples back and front on the character. I don't want my scene to become too static so where I find motion I want it there to breathe life into the scene. Nothing to detract from the focus. Just some life. Bubbles floating, stars around the character's head, water rippling. And I want to put a flame in this big lantern. You might not see much of it in the scene, but it will feel like the scene is more alive. One of the new features in CTA is GIF and APNG support. Previously, if you put a GIF on the stage, it would just sit there and do nothing, but not anymore. Here's a GIF I created in Photoshop. Now you could have bought this online somewhere just as easy. But watch what happens when I drop it into CTA. It loops forever. Now what if you bought a GIF or APNGs from somewhere and you need access to its frames? So here's how you do that. Bring the GIF into Photoshop. Put all the frames into a folder. Then put that folder into one and call it Sequence. That's the crucial part, name it sequence. Save as PSD, bring into Cartoon Animator, open the sprite editor, and there they are. But I'm going to use a GIF for this scene that loops. It makes my life easier. When I have my animation done, I can save the animation frames in Photoshop inside the sequence folder like before. Then I'm going to launch the file from Cartoon Animator rather than import them. This creates a link from Cartoon Animator to the file. Now let's launch the animation in Cartoon Animator. And this opens the file in Photoshop. And any changes I make will be saved inside of Cartoon Animator. This also works with SVG files in Illustrator. I like this. So this is real-time production flow updates that work with Photoshop and SVG in Illustrator. Open the sprite editor and let's put the animation on the timeline. I use the arrow keys. It's a much faster way to do this process. Now say I find something I want to change but I don't want to have to line up everything up on the timeline again. That's a waste of time. I go back into Photoshop, make the change, save it, and it updates in CTA on the timeline. CTA have some great features to take away the heavy lifting. I needed to animate the bedclothes so the character looked like he was breathing. So I used the FFD on the bedclothes. The built-in FFD editor has some great presets. So I used them and made some adjustments. This helped me make the character look like he was breathing and I did it fast and easy using the FFD editor. I also took advantage of the FFD editor later on when I needed to animate the bubbles. It's a great feature. I also used spring bones on the cloth in the character's hand. That way then I didn't have to animate the cloth saving me time. The process is simple and CTA gives us a whole library of characters, backgrounds, effects. Plus I have over 200 effects in the store with about 3 to 5 animations in each. So check out DexArt. I've used a lot of tablets creating animations. This animation, all the effects were created using the XP pen. I really recommend it. With FFD spring bones, being able to launch SVG and PSD to enhance our workflow, and all the other tools in CTA with a good process, anything is achievable. From simple animations like this to very complex ones. This is DexArt. Go create.